Hello, and thank you for joining our video tour of the FileHold user interface. My name is Chris, and I'm one of FileHold sales consultants, and I'll be your guide for the next few minutes. Today's video will look at the different user interfaces, starting with the FileHold desktop application, or FDA. We will look at where to find your documents, shortcut to access features, and learn how FileHold gives you a lot of information about your documents at a glance. We'll then have a quick look at the web client and the mobile client. FileHold is a server-based document management software. In order to see my documents, I need to verify my identity by logging into one of the three clients. Let's start with the FileHold desktop application. When I start up the FDA, the first thing I need to do is authenticate myself so that FileHold knows who I am and will only show me the documents that I'm allowed to see, along with the privileges and permissions that I have for those documents. Now that I've logged in, let's do a quick tour around the screen. FileHold is built to feel very much like a Windows environment and with lots of open space. So hopefully when people log in for the first time, this isn't too intimidating. This should be familiar to anyone who's used most Windows Explorer style environments. Just like a Windows Explorer, you've got a menu screen up top here. So I've got different drop downs of functions that I can activate. I can always see who's logged in up top here so I can see who's credentialed into the system. I have a search bar, so if I want to enter a simple search term such as a word or a phrase or a boolean search term or even do an advanced search from here. If I wanted to take a look at some more information about the document I have selected, I can always pop open the metadata and file properties panel. When I'm done with it, I can just click it to make it go away to give me back my space on screen. I'm not trying to clutter it with too much additional information. Some other functions down here, I have, for example, a document tray where I can gather my documents from different locations in, the, in my server and bring them together into one spot so I can see the, all of them in one spot. I also have an image viewer. Notice that I could undock this if I wanted to, so if you're doing a two-screen setup, I could always have my images on one side and my files on the other. And finally, our document assembly feature down here. This lets me gather documents together into a single PDF. This is an optional feature of FileHold and part of our advanced viewer, so talk to your salesperson if you're interested in seeing more information about that. Let's start off with having a look at the organizational structure that FileHold will use to store your documents. FileHold does a lot of work with helping companies transition from a paper-based process to an electronic filing system. And so to help with that, we use the organizing concept of filing cabinets. Here you can see some of my different cabinets that I have set up in my machine. You can create whatever kind of cabinets you need with whatever names you need for your organization. There's no limits to how many cabinets you can have, and there's no limits to what contents you can put into them. When I click open a cabinet, you'll see a series of drawers, just like a physical filing cabinet. When I select one of the drawers, you'll see some folders. And when I select a folder, you'll see some of the documents appear over here in the center area. You can have as many cabinets, drawers, or folders as you need. They are all customizable to fit the needs of your organization. Now that we have some documents on screen, we can see some more buttons and functions that are available. FileHold offers different ways to trigger options on documents. If you're a right clicker, you can always right click and you can get the functions that way. If you're a button presser, you can press one of the buttons up here. If you hover over top of a button, it tells you what it does, so there's no need to try to remember that. If you can't use the function right now, it's grayed out, but you can still see what it's going to tell you what it does. If you need some help, you can always click on the help button right over here and head over to our knowledge base to get some further details on what you're seeing. Each document is defined by how I plan to use it. This is the document schema, which you can see defined here. Each schema has unique information tags or metadata associated with it, and you can see that by clicking the side button. Once I pop this open, I can see more information about the document I've selected. So for example, when I select an email, I'm going to see the to, the from, the subject, the attachments of each one of the documents. But if I come over here to an invoice, that's going to change. Now I'm seeing the invoice number, the customer name, the invoice date, the total. In addition, you'll also see down here the version properties. This is going to tell me what the version of the document is, what the owner of the document is, the library status, even some other points of information like what the native application is that opens up the program or the size of the document. Schema helps me to keep my documents organized by their use type. So in this case, I'm seeing my documents in a schema-centric point of view, but I could just as easily organize these by their document name, or when they were last modified in the system, or even what their status is. I have these as different options. But what if I'm dealing with documents of the same type? 
Let's take a look at my accounting folder over here, and I'm going to open up my AP drawer, and I'm going to select my 2018 folder. And these are all AP invoices. They're all the same schema. So instead of having to see things in this generic point of view, I can come up to here and select a different viewpoint for myself. In this case, an AP invoice-centric point of view. Now I can see the invoice number, the invoice date, the customer name, the total, those metadata fields that I have contained up here on all my documents. This lets me quickly organize by the customer name, or by the invoice number, or by the invoice date. Whatever values I need to sort, I can easily do just by changing my viewpoint. Each user can customize their own view, so you can tailor your file hold to match your needs, and your colleague can do the same with theirs. What each user can see will depend on their user role. File hold controls document access for each user based on the schema and where the document is filed. What documents you can see and your level of permissions for what you can do to each document can be adjusted to fit your role with the organization. Let's look at some documents here in this folder. You can see some buttons up top which are currently inactive. They're all grayed out because right now I don't have a document selected. The only button that is active is my Add File button, and that's because I have a right to add documents into this area. If I didn't have that right, this button would also be grayed out. The first document I have listed is a PDF. As soon as I select it, the buttons turn on and the Metadata and File Properties panel will show me some of the details for this document. A lot of the functions that I'm going to show you with these buttons are actually duplicated with right-clicking. For instance, if I wanted to right-click and make a local copy, I could do that, or I could just come over to here and click the Make a Local Copy button. This will grab a copy of the document and put it onto my desktop or another location of my choosing. Now, if I just wanted to look at one of the documents, all I have to do is double-click it. That'll open it up using the native application. In this case, uh, my PDFs open up using Adobe Acrobat Reader, and so that's what I have open right now. When I'm done, I can close that out, and then when I'm finished working with File Hold, I can clear out those working documents. Or I can grab that local copy if I plan on doing some work with it later. If I do plan to edit the document, then I can use the next button over. This is the checkout feature. Checkout lets me flag the document, lets other people know that I'm working on it, and preserves it in the system so no one else can make any changes. This is part of File Holds version control, and you can see more about that at this link here or in the video description below. Next, there's a link button which you'll see is grayed out. That's because I only have one document selected. If I choose a second document, you will see it light up, and now I can create a link between these two documents one being the parent to the other. Next is delete. This is an express permission in file hold. You can ensure that only select team members or admins are allowed to delete documents. Next one over is email. This is so I can send documents using my native email application. Notice that I have the ability to either send this as an attachment to the email, like you would with most email applications, or I could send it as a link at the end of the email body, which is very useful if I want to ensure that the user is a file hold user and they have the right to see the document. Finally, I have the ability to email and check out the document if I wanted to. This would allow me to email it to someone and then check it out at the same time, which I could either be sending to myself so I can do some work on it later, or to someone else and ensure that they can't make any changes to it. You will see different colored symbols beside each of the documents. This is related to my level of permission that I have for each one. This first PDF has a green light on it, and so I have total access to this document. I can edit it, I can delete it as I need to, so I can check it out, I can email it, I can do all these functions. If I move, however, to this one with the yellow light on it, you'll see that the ability to delete this document has gone away. I'm a, I can read this document, but I can't delete it from the system. I can still check it out and edit it, but I'm limited to my other functions. A document with a red dot is a read-only document. In this case, I can't make any changes to this because it has been checked out, and as a result, my checkout functions and my delete functions have both been turned off. If I have a document that needs to be preserved, I could convert it into a record, like I have with this one with the gray dot, and here you can see that I can't, don't have the ability to check it out. But unlike a read-only user role, I could actually delete this because I have permission to do so. Remember that all these functions like checkout and delete are dependent on the user role, and that can be set based on the document schema or its folder location within FileHold. Let's have a quick look at some of the other areas of the library to complete our tour of the FDA. There's more to see here than I had the time to review today, but we've made lots of other videos which should help give you some background and some information about the features that we have. We'll provide links in the description below for each one. Going back up to the top of the library, we have the inbox, where documents are staged after being added to file hold. Here's where you will define document schema and file locations. 
Next we have the My File Hold section. This is where we'll have some shortcuts to things like your favorite documents, whether you have any document alerts, recently added documents to the system, lots of shortcuts to move around quickly. You get a calendar of upcoming events that you have within your file hold, and even a dashboard for administrators to get an at-a-glance look at where your file hold system is. As you can see, I could clearly use some more repository space. Next is Reviews and Approvals, tied to FileHold's Workflow module. This is easily our most popular module and offers some extraordinary utility with your documents. I'd say if you're going to have a look at one other video today, you should definitely check this one out about uh, Workflow. Search is perhaps the most useful function that FileHold offers to locate information within your system. Simply by selecting here, I can always enter a simple search whenever I need to. Same thing as the search bar up top. I could also do a focus search on an area just by right-clicking and bring open my search option here. Now while I'm in search, I also have the option of expanding this and doing save searches. So for example, I could have personal save searches for everyday activity or public save searches. We'd also really recommend having a look at our video on search and how it can help your organization. Virtual folders offer a way to gather documents from different parts of your library for projects that you're working on. It could be a personal project in your own virtual folders or a shared folder that other people are going to be accessing as well. Finally, just below the library, we have the archive. This is where you can send your documents that need to be retained, but you don't need to see in your library every day. Now let's turn to another way to access file hold, the web client. I'm going to open up Chrome, and as you can see here, I have to log in just like I would uh, with any other system. Again, we're going to authenticate what I'm allowed to see in the system. Now you can see that the web client is similar to the install client with a few slight differences. I can see my login ID up here, the same file structure as we saw in the FDA. The document tray has moved to this side, along with the scanner inbox. I have all the same options as I did in the FDA, including the library with the cabinets, drawers, and folders like I had within the FDA. When I select a folder, the documents will appear here just like it did before, along with the same color coding information. I have the same options up top here, this time as text instead of with buttons, and I can right click in order to activate functions as well. There are a few small differences between the FDA and the web client, which you can see in our knowledge base in the link below. Finally, we have our mobile client. The mobile client is an HTML5 web page, so it's designed to run off of the web browser from any one of your mobile devices you may need. So whether you're using a tablet or a handheld device, the HTML5 page will resize itself to make sure it works on that device. It's a simplified version of FileHold where you can add your documents, you can do a My Task so you can review or approve your documents, and most importantly, you can search for them. You can use a search term just like you can by word or phrase, or you can even trigger one of your save searches. So if you want to get access to one of your pre-built searches, no problem, easy enough to get to. Now, one thing just to remember, the mobile client, the web client, and the FileHold desktop application are all standard features with FileHold. Thank you for watching our video presentation today. If you'd like to learn some more about FileHold, please send us an email at sales at filehold.com and our team will reach out to learn what we can do to help. If you have any questions about what you've seen, leave a comment below and we will reply, or take a look at some of the other videos as part of our video tour series. Thank you again.